Hi, I'm Dominic with Tormac. I'm on the education team. In this video, what we're going to do is set up our electronic tool setter. To start off with, we should be in our screen. Everything should be referenced like we did on our earlier video. And now we're going to set up and go over to our probe section. In the probe section on the far top left hand corner, you should see more options. And we're going to go to our elect ETS, electronic tool setter, and we'll establish our setup. In there, what's nice is if you follow these instructions to the letter, you should be good to go as far as installing it, but we'll go over that anyway. Next, you're going to want to find the ETS holder and ETS probe as we will be installing them on our table. It has a T-nut which should slide right into these rails. And there's sliding. What I want to do is just get it so it's in place right underneath where I have my spindle. Next I'm going to place my probe into the tool holder. You can see that it lines up. You have these machine parts that line up to the machine parts of the tool holder. And they should be relatively free, so everything should be moving around at this point. Now I like that this comes to a very narrow point because what I'm trying to do is line up the point here with my tool holder. I'll bring my Z down a little bit lower just to make sure we're close. And that looks good from there. Now the next section, I'm going to go ahead and remove my probe. I'm keeping this in place and I'm going to move my X out of the way. I'll take a screwdriver and tighten this in place. I may want to be maybe a little bit more over because it's not as important right now that we're dead on, but we're going to set something up in a second and finally lock it in place. I don't want to go any farther towards the wall because in my X I can't get any farther. This is as far as it goes, but I can go a little bit more to my right and be anywhere in this back corner. Next thing I'll do is just double check to make sure we can touch off. So I'm going to bring my X and my Y so that the point is on the center of the little button on my, my probe. All right, now that this is locked in place, this is where my probe will always, when my machine is looking for my probe, it's going to go into this corner and try to go find it. So now this is locked in place, this is where it will be. So to establish the probe, let's go ahead and plug it in. It's got your, it's got five pins here. If I look on my pins here, I should be able to match them up pretty easily and it plugs in. Now it's important to make sure that you look at the light here. If that light is on, the probe is working. If for some reason that light is not on and it's plugged in, we do have an error. Now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and pull, that, pull the tool out. It's no longer needed for this, this part of the project. I personally like to hold on to the tool lightly as I'm holding on with this tool. And what that does is as I'm loosening this part out, I don't want this tool to just fall. It may break the tool. It's a very brittle carbide is extremely strong, but it's extremely brittle. and I don't want it to break. So I'm just kind of lightly holding it while I loosen it. Once it's loosened lightly, the nut should slide pretty much off and this tool will come out. So it's removed. I'll put this tool back. Now it's extremely important with the students and if you're in a classroom setting to make sure that you put the tool back in the holder with the numbers because you'll always want to make sure that those numbers match up to the correct tool. Last thing is we'll take the nut and collet completely off. We need to establish where this spindle is in space and the height of the spindle. So we'll go back to our tool and now what I want to do is make sure that the edge of this spindle, so I might even go with my Z depth, just a little bit closer. Now remember, this spindle is hollow in there, so if I tr line it up perfectly, I'm going to just keep going. It's never going to touch off. I want to make sure that the edge of this spindle is touching the edge of that button. So I'm happy there. Next step is I'll go ahead back to my Path Pilot screen. I'm going to go ahead and hit my ETS. Now this is a great example of when I hit that, I go have an error message. It's telling me I didn't read the instructions, but we need to establish, we're on tool 11. We needed to let it know that there is no tool in there. And so we're going to put tool 0. Now that we're at tool zero, we can go back to our probe page. And now I'll go ahead and place ETS spindle reference. We're referencing the spindle. As it's doing that, we just saw that it touched down and now it knows and we can see that that green light is on. We've referenced the spindle for this, for this project. All right, 
So we've now referenced it. Let's go ahead to our next section, which is going to be our ETS position. What I'm doing for this one is I'm getting it out of the way. We're gonna put our tool back in for this one. Same setup that we did earlier. I'm gonna use that exact same point. And this time I'm just gonna tighten this hand tight because we're gonna take it in and out for a couple more times. And we're just gonna make it snug. So we're good there. I'm not gonna use it for milling. I'm just making it for positioning. So we'll go ahead and go back to that back corner. Make sure you raise it in Z. And what I'm doing again is I'm just establishing where it's at. Page down. So I'm getting my Z as close as, as I can. And now if you look, we should be with this button almost touching, not even almost touching. I just want to make sure that it is lined up my X and my Y coordinates to make sure that this tip is at the center of that button. Finally, I want to move my Z axis all the way up as high as I can to allow for different tool lengths in the future. Now I'm going to go to my PathPilot software and I'm going to set this as my G37 position. Do I want to make sure that's correct? Yes, I want that as my G37 position. Now it's going to be important, and I'll give you an example of that, because I'm going to go ahead and move my tool out of the way. And when I press this button, move to G37, I'm just going to check it. It should move right back to where I established G37. That's going to be important because now I'm going to tell my machine at any time, go to G37 and touch off that tool. So in recap, we've now established our spindle. We've now established our G37. The last thing we need to know, need to set up is the, the length of our actual tool setter, how high it is from our table. We'll do that by establishing, we'll go into our work offsets and we'll get a block. I'm gonna use a one, two, three block. Any type of solid block that's not gonna compress will work for what we're going to do. We're gonna place the material on our table. We're going to first, and if you read the instructions on this, we'll move and set the work offset button to measure the electronic height setter, remove the tool from the spindle, so we'll do that next, and change to tool zero. Using a one, two, three block, we'll reference the spindle. So let's go ahead and do that in our section here. Again, we'll remove the tool. Now I've hand tightened it, so we should be able to loosen it relatively easy. We'll go to tool zero, and now we're gonna go to our one, two, three block, and we're just gonna reference the spindle. So, good advice on how to reference this. If I put this one, two, three block right here in the, in the, in the tool, and then try to drive my Z, I may damage the machine or damage the part trying to slam it in, or it might accidentally slam it. So I'm gonna put it off to the side here till it touches, and then gradually lift my Z until it no longer, and now what I'm looking for is when I'm bringing it up, bring it up, it's now, now I know that that is my Z. That Z is equal to the height of my one, two, three block, which is one inch from the table. Now that doesn't really matter on the setup. What we're really looking at is, is we're gonna establish this as our zero. We'll go back to our software and I'm now going to zero out my setup. So now it knows the table, the top of the one, two, three block is now at zero. So I'm gonna hit zero and it's going to zero out. Now you may see about a four tenths of a thousandth of an inch here, that's just, with the software, we're close enough that it's going to give us accurate readings within four tenths of a thousandth of an inch. All right, so that's the top. Now let's go ahead. I'm going to bring my my Z up, and I'm bringing the Z up on above the block. I'm going to put my one, two, three block under it, and now if I've done it correctly, we'll have the spindle right where it's going to touch the button. Again, we're, we're making sure that the edge of the spindle is next to the button. And we're going to do that last setup, move and set our ETS height. So when I push this button, it should touch off on that button. 
And there we have it. We'll do it one more time just to verify. If you look at this number, it should be close to 0 0.9 or 0.893. For this tool, that's about the height of, of our setting. It will be off, each machine's gonna be a little bit different, but around that number should be correct, around a 0.9. We've now established our electronic tool setter. Anytime we want to establish our Z depth, we can use our tool setter to figure out the height of our tool and its relationship to our material in the table. So now it's established, let's go ahead and use it. I've got a piece of material. Now normally this material maybe should be clamped down, but this is just for an example. So I'm gonna load a tool in. So I'm gonna use a different tool. We're gonna to use our end mill. Any tool will work in our tool setter. Now this time we're actually going to mill with this project, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten the tool up. And for this tool, we're using tool 7.6, so I'm going to go ahead into my offsets. And I just happen to know that this is tool 6, so we're going to name it tool 6. Now the machine, what we did was we said from tool 0, which was our spindle, we've now put tool 6 in. Tool six relates to our offsets. We're now on, on this tool, which matches this setting, which matches that tool set. So let's go ahead and use our tool setter. First thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and put the stock in. I'm gonna go to the material. I'm gonna go to our offsets page and I'm going to establish first our tool. We need to measure off the length of our tool because every time I put the tool into the collet, it doesn't match up every time. We'll click on move and set our tool length. What it's doing is going over to our G37 position and now touching off the tool. And from there, it is now giving us that length. Remember when we first started on one of our videos, we got the diameter, but the lengths weren't there. It just gave us that number. The next thing I need to do is establish the height of the material from the table or just the zero top of our stock. I'm gonna put the tool setter in the middle or on my stock. I'll bring the tool over. And now I'm gonna line up the tool setter over the piece of material. My end mill should match up to the button. I'll go back over to our, our software and I'm gonna to go to our work offset. Now, this is our G54 position that we talked about. So we got G54, G55. We'll talk about these in future videos, but this is for, to establish our Z height for our 54 offset. On the far right hand corner, we should have something that says move and set work offset. We'll push that button. It's now touching off the top of the tool, and we've now established that, so there's our new Z height. If I were to do all of this together now and check it, if I bring my Z down, I should have it so that if it's pretty close here touching, it should be pretty close to zero. So I'm 20 thousandths or 29 thousandths of an inch above it, which matches up. So in review, we've now established our electronic tool setter. What's really nice about this electronic tool setter is every time I switch out a tool, maybe I'm using a big tool to hog out a lot of material and then need something smaller to refine it, I don't have to reestablish my Z every time. I can go touch off the tool and it'll do the math from the top of my stock that I've already established, touching off the tool and now it knows the right height and we'll mill from there. In review, we've now established our electronic tool setter and now know how to use it. Our next video will establish our origin and set up our zero, zero, zeros for milling material. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe so you can watch the rest of our series.